Hey y'all, so today we're doing a video on visual scripting inside of Unity 6. I'm personally using the 6.1 alpha, but anything Unity 6, even Unity 22.3 should work just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and dive right in with creating a character customization menu. Uh, basically pick your character. So the first thing I need to do is get a few buttons in here. So I'm inside of the game camera looking at it and I can go ahead and come over here and go to UI. And I'm going to create a canvas to use the UGUI system instead of using UI Toolkit. UI Toolkit's great, but I think UGUI is just going to give us uh, an easier time explaining visual scripting as we get through this. So inside of the canvas, now I can come over here, go into UI and grab a button. I'm going to call this button Warrior. And then I want to create two more buttons. I'm going to call this one Mage and this one maybe Ranger, something like that. So if I want to, I can go ahead and now that I have the buttons created, drag all three down. So I'm just going to select them all and while looking through the game camera, bring the position Y way down. And then I can grab one of them and move the position X negative until it looks pretty good. Uh, let's just say negative 250, and that'll give us a nice number for our Ranger, which will be positive 250. So now all of our buttons are in. I'm just going to go ahead and customize these very quickly to say Warrior, Mage, and Ranger. And then let's go ahead and dive into visual scripting. So I'm going to close up the canvas, right click, come over to visual scripting scene variables. There are a few ways to do this. I've just found this to be the fastest way for me. Now that I have this element, I'm going to add a component and type in script machine. Now that I've made the script machine component and added that here, I can create a new graph and I'm going to call this graph character select. Then I can go ahead and give it a name. If I wanted to have multiple script machines, this helps to just kind of understand what each one is doing. So now that we have that, we're going to click on edit graph. And now that we're in here, you can see something that you're familiar with if you've done any programming in Unity before, and that is an on start and an on update. On start more or less means whenever the scene first starts, this will happen. On update is something that will check every frame and be looking for uh, something to do all the time, which means it's a little bit of an expensive thread to run things on. So I'm going to delete both. And instead, right click out here in the main area and type on button click. I'm going to left click that and here we are. Now there are a few different objects that you can create variables within. So you can create app wide variables, scene wide variables, object wide variables that will be calling objects. So this is the one we'll be using or variables that only exist within this graph. So I'm going to go back into object and go ahead and find a button. So I want to do warrior button inside of type. I can click the drop down and type in the word button. And over here I can hit the circle and find my warrior button. And now we're good to go with this variable. Now that we have the variable created, I'm going to drag it out into the main area and pull this over to the button that we're looking for. So now that we have that, we can say, uh, let's say that we are looking for a tag because searching for tagged items is a bit more efficient than searching for an item by name or another type of metric. All right, so now I'm going to come over here and say find tag, find object with tag. I can type the tag in here and let's just call it warrior. And then let's say I want to enable the mesh renderer because it's going to be more efficient this way to just turn on and off the mesh renderer than to activate and deactivate the item itself. So I'm going to say mesh render and we can do set enabled and tick that on. And now the question is, well, the logic works that we have a warrior button, we have an event and now we have a find item with tag, and then we have a set enabled. That all makes sense, but now we need to try it with an item in scene. So let's go ahead and test it and get a 3D object in here to turn the mesh renderer on. 
So I'm going to go into game. This all looks good. We're staring right at this bridge. So now I'll look inside of scene. Go into my character pack. Go to heroes preposed. We have a mage. We have a warrior, which I'll do the fighter. Why not? And then we have a ranger, which I'll just use the... No, I'll use the archer. That's better. There we go. And these are all three the female archetypes. They also have male archetypes, which is cool as well. Um, so if we wanted, we could even add a button click to determine which gender you're going for. Now I can come over here, bring them all over here onto the bridge somewhere that I'm pretty happy with. And I think that looks pretty decent. Let's say I want to rotate them all just slightly looking towards the camera. And then I want to, with all of them selected, right click and say create empty parent. We'll call that parent characters. And in all three, I'm going to disable the mesh renderer. Now I want to come over here and indicate a tag that each of them will have. So if you don't have these tags made, you can go to add tag and then hit the plus sign over here and do... I'm just going to say warrior two for demonstration purposes. So now if I go over to female mage, I can do my mage tag. If I go over to my fighter, I can go and do a warrior tag. And if I go into my archer, I can do a ranger tag. So all that makes sense. And now the main thing is going to be dragging this warrior asset that it's now found into the mesh render item so that it's not referencing quote unquote this. Um, so now that that logic is set up, we can go ahead and drag our script graph off to the side here. And I'm just going to zoom out slightly and hit play. And now we'll be able to see these three buttons over here. So if I click Ranger, nothing happens. If I click Mage, nothing happens. If I hit Warrior, here comes our Warrior. And you can see if I click it again on the right-hand side that there are these three items that are all glowing because I'm creating the circumstance in which it activates those. So you can see what's working and what's not here. Uh, you can also do things like debugging logs and whatnot just to test. Okay, so all of that works well. So I'm going to go ahead and stop play. Drag script graph back over here. Let's make this all a bit larger so we can keep playing with it. And let's say I grab these three items. Actually, I'll just grab all four and copy paste and paste. So that's control C and control V. Then I need to create variables that go with the others. So I'm going to say mage button. Type, type in button in the search, grab that, and then I can either drag it in from up here in my UI, or I can just find it by clicking that white circle. And then we'll do our last one, which will be ranger button. Great, and ranger. So now that I have those created, if I scroll in here, I can change warrior button here into mage, and warrior button here into ranger. Come over here and change the tag to mage and change the tag to ranger. Now I need to come over into here and make sure that these have the correct tags on them. I believe that they do. So we have warrior, mage, and ranger. Looks good. So now this should, if we hit play, activate each one's mesh renderer. So let's test that very quickly. Here's the mage, here's the warrior, here's the ranger. So now we need them to turn off the others when we select what we have here. So in order to do that, I essentially want to go back into the script graph and drag a selection box around these to copy and paste and drag over. And we're essentially going to want to tick this off for these three. And basically, we want whatever we're running next to run all three of these back to back to turn them all off and then set the enable state of the one that it's meant to have on. So I'm going to drag these two up here and drag these two right up here. 
and set that logic so that they are moving between themselves. Looks good. So now what I want to do is essentially inject this between the button click event and the finding with correct tag event. So what I can do then is use custom events. So if I want, I could come way out here, add a node and say custom event. And let's drag all of this over and say when something happens, we're going to do this sequence of things. So now I can call this whatever I want. So we're going to say character hide. Okay, so now that I have the custom event that launches called character hide, I can come over here and I can add a node that is a custom event trigger. And this I want to call character hide, just how I did the other. And now I have this come up here and down to here. Okay, and then we want this custom event down for the second and third as well. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. Um, you would think, well, why not just have all of them go to this custom event trigger? And it's because it needs this logic to move forward in a linear sense. And the output of that can't really go out to three different things simultaneously. So what I'm going to do is paste again, bring this down, come over here. And now we should be in a good spot to where it will disable the characters that we do not want to have right before it will select and turn on the mesh render for the characters that we do want. So let's go ahead and hit play, test our logic, and if it's all sound, then we'll wrap up this tutorial as a 10 to 15 minute tutorial on that character selection. So here's our mage, here's our warrior, and here's our ranger. And if we're looking at this in the script graph, as we go through, you'll be able to see which ones light up when I click on each button. So there's mage, there's ranger. So now we have a character selection screen. Uh, if we want, we can do another tutorial in the future now about how to save this out as a variable and then pull this variable into the next level that loads or the next scene that loads to ensure that the character that you've selected pulls in. But this is the basics of the visual scripting and script graph creation of variables, leveraging of variables, creating custom events, doing things like triggered events, uh, on button clicks, finding with tag, etc. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to see more tutorials on this specific tool inside of Unity. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.